Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So last year I created a growing rack for all of the plants that I intended to grow at the farm last summer. Unfortunately because of equipment breakdowns that never ended up happening but the rack worked out perfectly. So I went to Walmart and Amazon and I grabbed parts to create a second growing rack because it worked so well. Last year I lucked out because the actual rack that came from Walmart was on sale. I've been looking for the past year for that same rack to go on sale and it just hasn't. It's always been well over $100. Well in the middle of February I was at Walmart and I happened to see that they had one left and it was on clearance. So I grabbed it. I couldn't pass up that opportunity. It's an exact duplicate of the one that I set up last year. Now you could say that this is a metal wire baker's rack or you know whatever you want to call it but the intent of this rack is usually for use in the garage and it's black powder coated. There's a lot of shelves and it works out perfectly for this use because you can set the distance of the shelves at different heights up the legs. So I assembled these shelves at the same height intervals as the original shelf because those heights last year worked fine for both starting the seeds in the grow tray as well as when I transplanted them in the peat pots. The amount of light that they received was ideal in both scenarios. So for this new rack, I simply duplicated it. And my expectation is that this year it'll work out just as good. Now these things go together fairly easy. It took me probably about 10 minutes to put the shelf together. Once I had the shelf set up and leveled, the next thing that I wanted to do was put the heat mats on the racks. Now I buy smaller heat mats than what you would think of for racks being this wide because over the years I found out that you don't need all that much heat for seeds to propagate and for the plants to really take off. So when I have two seed starting trays per rack, about half of the tray is on one side of the heat mat and the other seed starting tray is on the other half of the heat mat and that provides just enough warmth. If you have too much heat, you're gonna run into problems. First of all, you're going to evaporate water really rapidly and the plants will likely shrivel and die. And second of all, if you just provide too much heat, you're gonna run into problems where the plants will ultimately wilt and then die. So the smaller heat mats are just fine. I also grabbed an exact set of eight grow lights. This is the exact same kit of lights and heat mats that I bought last year for the original grow rack. These things are really nice. They're not quite as long as what I would have hoped for, for the width of these racks. But if I attach two of them per shelf, and if I stagger them left to right, shelf to shelf, then I get more than enough light coverage. And the lights are really, really bright also. So there's really not a risk of there not being enough light. So what I do is simply zip tie these lights to the bottom of the rack above the shelf where the seedling trays are going to be. So each one of the trays is going to be directly under two sets of lights, and that is the same case for each of these shelves on this rack. As you can see when I plug this in, there is no shortage of light. These things are incredibly bright LEDs, and the connectors are very simple. It's a daisy chain from light to light, shelf to shelf, from the bottom of the rack all the way up to the top. They plug in with one main plug, and I have the plug set on a plug-in timer. So the lights only turn on when they're supposed to. I have them set for 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days a week. So all in all, both of these grow racks and all of the plants on them get 12 hours of grow light every single day. So once all of these are plugged in, then it's just a matter of tidying everything up. And I use zip ties because as you can see, there's a spaghetti mess of wires. 
Anytime there's water involved with something, like watering these plants, I want to control any path that that water can possibly take. The process that I go through for these grow racks is very simple. I just zip tie all of the light wires to each shelf and vertical, and then I go through and I zip tie all of the heat mat wires all down that back left leg so that all of the wires reach the power strip and the timers that I set up. Everything looks nice and neat and clean when it's done, and everything just works. All of the work of creating my second grow rack was in preparation of my first ever live event on March 1st. It was a Friday night, and I wanted to do a seed starting event. Usually when I do this year to year, I do it alone in my basement over several days. I've received questions on the process that I go through to start the seeds and how I maintain the plants once they're planted, so I figured, why not do a live event? And it was great. I had probably 100 people, 150 people tops, and uh, I interacted with probably 20 or 30 people throughout the course of the evening. It was really nice. Um, I'd never done a live before. And as you can see, I have plenty of seeds for everything. Now, obviously, not all of these are going to get started inside. A lot of these, especially in that cardboard box, are direct sow. They're corn seeds, sunflower seeds. I have a quarter of a million perennial wildflower seeds, and all of those are gonna go right into the ground. Now, as you can see here, this is some of the footage from my live event. And when I start seeds, I prefer to use these little compressed peat pellets. They're fun to work with, and the best part is when you get to pour the hot water on top of them, and then they puff up. It takes a little while for them to puff up, but they feel like dirt marshmallows, I guess, <laughs> once they're puffed up, and then you sow the seeds directly into those peat pellets. Now this pencil that I'm using is to poke holes in each of the peat pellets so that I could put the seeds in. I've been doing this process for about 20 something years and this pencil is the same pencil that I've used for all of those years. Somehow I haven't lost it. Uh, I keep it right with my kit of stuff for seed starting and it's just one of those uh, you know, trusty old friends that have been there since the beginning many, many years ago. So once I have all of the holes poked into the peat pellets, I simply rip open a packet of seeds and one by one I go through and I plant one seed per peat pellet. Now over the years I've learned a thing or two about how these seeds germinate and I know that certain types of seeds don't have a hundred percent success rate. In fact, most packaged seeds have only about a 65 to 85 percent propagation rate or germination rate. So you will not get a viable plant out of, you know, anywhere from 25 to 35 percent of the seeds. So in some of these packets, you get a huge amount of seeds and I end up putting two or three or sometimes even four seeds into each peat pellet. And in the end, I can always thin them out if all of them happen to grow. This year, I had really good luck. I think I have probably a 75% germination rate across these packets of seeds. This year I tried a few different types of trays, and these are open cell trays, and you fill them with dirt. So I figured that I would give it a try, but in the end I was a little bit disappointed, mostly because of the type of dirt I used. I really like this Back to the Roots brand. Uh, they sell this at Walmart and various other places. But this dirt doesn't really hold moisture well. It's very coarse, uh, almost like there's bits of branches and you know it's not soft water retaining dirt so while I did get decent germination with this um, it, it's just not good to work with especially because I travel a lot and I have to water aggressively before I travel and this stuff does not hold water so these plants are not doing quite as well as the plants in the peat pellets which 
do hold water very well. So it's very easy working with these open cell trays. You just pour in a bunch of dirt, spread it around, and uh, the rest of the process is identical to using the peat pellets. Now here I'm planting some um, gourds and some zucchinis and squash and some watermelons and cantaloupes. So these I don't poke holes before I sow the seeds. I orient the seeds properly so that they will grow right and then I just press them down in. So here you can see what I just talked about where I plant two or three seeds per cell or per peat pellet and hope that I get some amount of germination uh, from the seeds. In this case, uh, I got about 50%. So in most of these open cell trays, I got roughly two plants per cell. So I guess that's good. And then of those two plants, I'll either plant the entire cell or I may weed one of those plants out and just stick with the stronger plant. In one of the other open cell trays, I sort of did a hybrid. I planted some decorative gourds in one half, and then I planted some other plants in the second half. So over on the right hand side, there's no need to poke holes. All of these seeds just get pushed right in. On the left hand side of the tray, however, I'm using my special SpongeBob pencil that's been with me for decades and I'm picking the holes and then inside these holes I dump a bunch of seeds. So now in these trays I'm planting some cherry peppers, some hot cherry peppers and these seeds are terrible to germinate so I put 10, 20, even more seeds per cell and I'm lucky if I get one out of every 10 cells. These seeds come directly from cherry peppers and I dry them and I replant them year after year. So unfortunately I don't get a lot of great results from them. But here you can see me watering. Uh, I definitely label every row or every group of rows per plant so that when they grow I know what they are. And that's the process. You've seen peat pellets, you've seen the open cell trays, and those are the two types that I, I grow. So now you just put the greenhouse lid on, stick it on the shelf, and you wait. It takes anywhere from a week to three weeks for the seedlings to start growing. And then once they start, that's when the exciting part happens. That's when you start noticing change. A little bit of patience is needed, but here you can see that things are actually starting to grow. The very first time you remove a lid and you see all the little baby plants in there, you know that spring is right around the corner. It's such an exciting time of the year. So much to do. So this is my setup this year. It's two duplicate seed starting racks. It's perfect for what I have and any expansion. But let's fast forward to mid-April and look at these plants. They're great. They're anywhere from 5 to 10 or 11 inches tall. Almost everything is growing prolifically. I planted some herbs. I planted some tomatoes, some peppers, some zucchinis and gourds, and everything's growing great. I even have an assortment of plants from Romania, which are all growing phenomenally well. If I do decide to transplant into peat pots this year, if I have time, I have ample expansion room. And as you can see, the two growing racks are performing wonderfully. Now don't go anywhere because there's so much to come and I'm happy to say that this is the last video that will feature the snowy intro and outro because spring is here and things are happening on the farm. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.